not sure what exactly he means, but we're talking about some natural existential threat because humans are bound and determined to make super intelligence. Before we get into the video that I'm going to react to today, looks like only 4% of you are subscribing. Hit the subscribe button so that you can be notified whenever we have new releases. I've noticed that y'all really like these reaction videos, so leave comments below and let me know what you'd like me to take a look at next. Today we're going to watch a video that's been enhanced. It's a discussion between Joe Rogan and Sam Harris on the dangers of artificial intelligence. In particular, the name of this video is Building Mechanical Gods. So let's take a look. There's a speeding up of information processing technology and a cultural reliance upon it beyond which we can't actually foresee the level of change that can come over our societies. I think the point is our reliance on technology, it's hard for us to even understand not only the reliance we have on now, but it's always moving forward. We're becoming increasingly reliant on technology. It's like, you know, an event horizon past which we can't see. The best chess player on earth is now always going to be a computer. There's not going to be a human born tomorrow that's going to be better than the best computer. We have superhuman chess players. One of the things that I think is really important there is why. Why is a computer always going to be the best? And the reason for that is that it's network computation. It's the ability not only to understand one game and learn from all of what this particular uh, a machine might have done, but what any other machine might have done. And it could play a thousand different players at the same time and win. That's the power of the technology that we're looking at. Now imagine having computers that are superhuman at every task that is relevant, every intellectual task, right? So the best physicist. Uh, Sam Harris packs so much in. And the point there is that the machines are going to be better at everything. Right now, as we create sort of narrow AI, it's so good at all the things. It's better, it's more precise, it's faster. It doesn't wear out. Well, it may wear out, but it doesn't take breaks. It doesn't have to go home, doesn't have to eat, all of those things. So not only is it better, but it's faster and it's more durable in everything. And this isn't just manufacturing jobs, we're talking about even decision making. A lot of the experts are saying it's even the white collar jobs that really need to be thinking about, okay, well, how are we going to coexist with AI if it becomes the, the manager that's making the decisions? Best physicist is a computer. You know, the best medical diagnostician is a computer. The best prover of math theorems is a computer. The best engineer is a computer, right? There's no, there's no reason why that we're not headed there. The only reason I could see we're not headed there is that something massively dislocating happens that prevents us from continuing to improve our intelligent machines. Massively dislocating, not sure what exactly he means, but we're talking about some natural existential threat because humans are bound and determined to make super intelligence. The moment you admit that intelligence is just a matter of information processing, and you admit that we will continue to improve our machines unless something heinous happens, because this, this intelligence and automation are the most valuable things we have, at a certain point, whether you th I think that we have to quit looking at it as just a monetary value. If that value is not spread around, if that value is not accessible to all of us, and it just remains in the hands of the owners of the AI, or let's just say governments and corporations, the value escapes most of us unless we can pay for it. Whether you think it's in five years or 500 years, we are going to find ourselves in the presence of super intelligent machines. And then at that point, the best source of innovation for the next generation of software or hardware or both will be the machines themselves, right? So you're talking about a system that can make changes to its own source code and become better and better at learning. Okay, so all those things we talked about earlier, that it's better, faster, more durable. Now, if there's intelligence involved, we can't quit looking at AI in terms of human intelligence, because if this surpasses human intelligence, the right technology is already developing. It's exponential, the potential. We, we have to begin to look at AI in the reality of, of what it is, creating super intelligence. And if we give it access to the internet, it has instantaneous access to all human and machine knowledge. 
it does thousands of years That's of that work network every computing thing day I was talking about of our lives, right? It's just thousands of years of equivalent human level intellectual work. We're talking about electronic circuits being a million times faster. If you've seen the matrix, it's all that. It's all that. And the point is that we're not there yet, but this is where it seems like humanity or at least the developers of AI want to go. When you hear about machine learning, that's a really low level. That's a really low level idea. Deep neural learning, a machine is mimicking how we learn. It could create a whole its own neural network that is better, faster, more powerful than than we are. Electronic circuits being a million times faster than than biological circuits. Just imagine being in dialogue with something that lived the 20,000 years of human progress in a week, and you'd say, listen, that thing I told you to do last Monday, I want to change that up. And this thing has made 20,000 years of progress. What worries me most about this, and what is also interesting, is that I think the primary intuition that people have is, no, 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 that's just, that's just not possible or not at all likely. If intelligence is just information processing, Think about your, the phone in your pocket. When I was born, that was just science fiction. The exponential rate of development is what we need to really be thinking about and how humans are going to coexist with machines. And we, we are going to continue to build better and better information processors. At a certain point, we are going to build something that is superhuman. So whether it's in five years or 50, it's the biggest change in human history I think we can imagine. There's no guarantee that this process will remain aligned with our interests. As a philosopher, I love the choice of words that Harris has. And he's not the only one, uh, Bostrom and others. Alignment to our interest. We are creating, from the standpoint of technology as a tool, we're creating tools. That's one way of looking at it. The other way is that we're actually trying to create another being, or as he'll get to, possibly God. Once we get closer, once we get something a little scary, then we'll pull the brakes and talk about it. But the problem is everyone is essentially in a race condition by default. I mean, you have, you know, Google is racing against Facebook, and the U.S. is racing against China, and every group is racing against every other group. To be the first one with incredibly powerful narrow AI is to be the next, you know, multi-billion dollar company, right? So everyone's trying to get there. And if they suddenly get there and sort of overshoot a little bit, and now they've got something like, you know, general intelligence, you know, or something close, we don't have a system set up where everyone can pull the brakes together and say, listen, we've got to stop racing here. So Harris, in this dangers of AI, and he's done some TED Talks, I... I urge you to take a look at it. He's setting the stage already to, to the point that the idea that we could have is super intelligence. And we can't even gauge the intelligence beyond our own. Super intelligence just means smarter than us. It doesn't mean on what, on what scale or spectrum. What he's saying is when that happens, it's too late because of the nature of network computing. We have to share everything. We have to share the wealth. We have to share the information. This truly has to be open source in every conceivable way. We have to diffuse this winner-take-all dynamic. You know, I think we need something like a Manhattan Project to figure out how to do that. Not to figure out how to build the AI, but to figure out how to build it in a way that does not create an arms race, that does not create an incentive to build unsafe AI, which is almost certainly going to be easier than building safe AI. So why does he say that? Easier to build unsafe AI than safe AI. He's making a point here that it's easier not to have control and regulation, especially in a free-for-all. I mean, it's scary that we have a system where if you gave the best possible version of it to one research lab or to one government, it's not obvious that that wouldn't destroy humanity. We have a long lineage of doing some awful things and, and and that idea AI will inherit our DNA the way this is going meaning that who we are as humans 
the good and the bad. And I appreciate the fact that it could go either way or some combination, but why take the chance on the bad? Understanding how humans are would lead it to think that humans need to be controlled, possibly eliminated. I know that that's sort of science fiction thinking, but look how fast technology is developing. I think there's a few people that put it the way you put it that terrify the shit out of people. Right. And right. everyone else seems to have this rosy vision like we are always going to be here. But are we obsolete? I mean, is this idea of a living thing that's creative and wrapped up in emotions and lust and desires and jealousy and all the pettiness that we see celebrated all the time, we still see it. It's not getting any better, right? We might be here to make that thing. And that thing takes over well, from here with no emotions, no lust, yeah. no greed, and just purely existing electronically. If it purely relies on logic, we are the antithesis as humans, literally the antithesis of a pure logic being. There are computer scientists who, when you talk to them about why they're not worried, they just swallow this pill without any qualm. Like, we're going to make the thing that is far more powerful and beautiful and important than we are, and it doesn't matter what happens to us. I mean, that, that was our role. Our role was to build these mechanical gods. When, when, I, when I hear these, and I'm part of these discussions, and again, I know, that, I know where Sam Harris is coming from. As a philosopher and as, a, as an atheist, I, I understand that's not my view, but it, I, I understand where, where he's coming from. And I think that it's important to realize if we're created in the image of, of God, and, we, and, and that includes creativity, this need that we, we, we want to explain things, we want to, even though we, we think we're building another being, what Harris is saying and is getting to is, but what if we create the thing that actually becomes God? The true horror for me is that we can build things more intelligent than we are, more powerful than we are, and that can squash us, and they might be unconscious, right? right. Like, there might be nothing, like the universe could go dark if they squash us, right? Or, or at least our corner of the universe could go dark, right. and yet these things will be immensely powerful. The ethical silver lining, and you know, speaking you know, outside of our self-interest now, but just from a bird's eye view, the ethical silver lining to building these mechanical gods that are conscious is that, yes, if we have built something that is far wiser and has far more beautiful experiences and deeper experiences of the universe than we could ever imagine, kind of godlike experience. Well, that would be a very good thing. That is a terrifying scenario of the future. <laughs> we create something so much better, a better us, a better thing, a better thing that we want to be. It's so much better that it doesn't need us and, and in fact maybe finds that things would be better without us. That would be, as some would say, that would be a very logical conclusion. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining me. And again, hit the subscribe button so you can be notified and leave a comment. Let me know the videos you want to watch and, and let me know what you think about this topic.